G'day guys, Troy from FM Life, and welcome back to another episode of Before Heading Continue. This will be training part two. So today we'll be talking about um, in, uh, sorry, mentoring and individual training, and also we'll cover rest as well uh, in there. So if you didn't watch part one, uh, go back and have a look at that. That was all about uh, my training schedules and how I um, come up with the different philosophies or different philosophies that you can try out uh, at your club and just have to, just to have fun with training. So if you haven't uh, watched that video, uh, please go back and watch that one. Okay, so the first thing we'll be talking about in today's video will be mentoring. Um, so with mentoring, um, as always, you can ask your assistant to do it. Not always, um, not always going to give you the best options there, but it gives me. Um, I'll sh I'll go off this and I'll I'll show you how I set it up. Um, so what we're having a look at is uh, why we're mentoring in the first place. So mentoring will take over tutoring uh, as it was in the previous uh, versions of the game, and we want to increase um, the players. Um, number one is professionalism. Um, now that professionalism attribute is a hidden attribute, so you can't see it. Uh, you'll get an idea on what that attribute is in terms of um, what their personality is. So there's a couple key personality um, uh, descriptions there that we want to have a look at. So the model citizen is the best by far, and you're going to have a professionalism of 20. Um, also, another one there is uh, professional. Obviously, that's going to have a high professionalism. Uh, resolute as well, which give you, I think, 15 to 20 in terms of that attribute. So those are the kind of um, players that uh, we want to um, having, have in those mentoring groups to actually pass on uh, some of those personality attributes uh, that we are looking for, that we desire. Um, so why we do that mainly is professionalism attribute, if you don't know, it will um, give you a boost in terms of when you're developing. When the player is developing, he will uh, develop faster if he has a, a higher attribute in professionalism. So that's the main reason why we want to um, get, some, uh, get the players, especially when they're younger, get them to a higher professionalism professionalism uh, because it'll it, yeah increase the attribute faster that's essentially why we do it um, in this version of the game it is uh, it's not hard it is harder but it's 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 a longer process it's not like it was uh, in previous versions of the game where over six months you can increase everything right up so it's a yeah it's a long-headed game yeah in this version of the game so then there's other variables there's other aspects that go into it so the variables are um we can see him here, the hierarchy uh, of the player. So in team leader, in terms of uh, the hierarchy, will come into uh, your dynamics of the squad. Uh, so your team leaders, highly influential players, uh, influential players, and then others. So when we have a look back at this, we can see that Phil Jagielka is a team leader. So he's going to have, and over here, a significant uh, influence on the group. So And he's got the best personality. If you've got a player there that's got the most or the, a significant uh, influence on the rest of the squad, but a poor personality, that's something you'd, you want to look out for and, and get rid of that straight away. Um, so yeah, we'll have a look at the hierarchy of the players. If they're in the same social group, that does help uh, to pass on those um, personality attributes faster. So that's something to look out for. Obviously, the age and also um, the um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, how often the, the the player plays, or how many caps? Sorry, that's the one. That's what I was looking for. How many caps the players has the player has, especially for your club. Um, so that's the main kind of area you want to have to look out for when setting up the groups. Also. Um, it does make a it does make a difference if they're in different training units. So if we have a look at the units, so we want to try to group the defensive units uh, in one mentoring category and also the attacking in uh, another. Uh, mentoring category so that's why we set up only a couple of groups depending on how many players you've got it is at the side with a good personality but what i like to do is set them up myself um before we do that what we want to have a look at because we do know the hierarchy does play a, a big effect is we want to have a look at the team leaders and see if, if we can get a couple of those in turn in the mentoring or the main significant guys in the mentoring so if we have a look at leighton baines and once again model citizen uh, everton is kind of blessed with a couple of these model citizen uh, uh, players so we want definitely Leighton Baines to have um, a group and also we already know Phil Jagielka has. Uh, Coleman unfortunately is, is driven which is not too bad we can see uh, a good increase in determination if we choose Coleman but that that's now free defense free defender so we'll probably leave out Coleman and then set up groups for uh, Leighton Baines and also Phil Jagielka. Now when you are doing what am I doing um, when you are doing your mentoring groups you can only choose the players that are in your current first team squad. Now, if you do have, you know, some top talents that are actually in the side, 
oh sorry in your under 23s or under 18s and you want to you want to mentor them now you can move them up i don't recommend moving up you know every player into into the senior side just to get a mentoring done now keep in mind that when you are mentoring a player it's it's best to keep the groups quite small you need a minimum of three and i say a, a maximum of four so you don't want the one player uh to have to mentor you know a whole eight under 18s it's just not going to work out like that he, you need to have um he needs to split up his time um in between the, the two or three players that you choose so that's why you want to just pick you know maybe one two three players from your under uh, under 23s and under 18s if you do think that you're going to get a little bit more out of them so especially if you had a five star potential player for the four stars um, i probably wouldn't i probably wouldn't bother to be honest um because they're not really going to shine all too often but having a look once again at your your main squad and having a look at some of the younger players and there's a you know there's a fair few younger players there mostly strikers um or attacking players, I should say. But yeah, that's, that'll give you an idea on who you really want to mentor. So coming back over to the mentoring. So we set up this first group. Well, we don't want that. Um, at a group. And what I normally do is just have a defensive group, a mid group, an attacking group. Because we've got two really good... Um, we've got two model citizens in the defense. Uh, we might want to set up two defensive groups. Um, Zuma is is only on loan. So he's only going to be there for the one uh, one year. We've got... Mina, um, which is fairly determined, which is okay, but he's he's only young, he's 23, so he's someone we really really want to have a look at as well. Um, and Kenny as well, fairly determined. He's 21, he's got a bit of room to move. And as we can see, as we set it up, we've got Phil Jagielka looking after the two players, um, and he's got the significant uh, influence over the side. So that, that's the main things we want to look out for. Uh, going down to maybe, I just want to add a group. Um, if we have a look at the attack, um, there's, I don't think there's too many players there. So going down, now we've got a Resolute, but he, I don't think he's been at the club for too long. Um, but we might try to choose him anyway and just have some of these younger players. Um, if you have a look, there's two on average. That's something we want to try to eliminate if we can. We've got um, Richardson on lights. Um, so we'll get rid of you. I forgot who that was. And uh, maybe try to add another player. Uh, if we have a look, we've got Lookman out yeah, so we've got Lookman, he, and he's a light influence. So that's something you just want to have a look at and make sure your your main guy that you want to pass on the uh, personality attributes has the biggest influence over the side. So we've got two lights and an average. So that's what we do with uh, mentoring. Look, it's uh, in, in this year's version, in this game, in this version of the game, I found it very difficult. Um, with my personal evidence to save, because I had um, model citizens there for a couple of years, uh, it was easier and I did pass on attributes. Uh, I think Kenny came up to be a model citizen as well. And um, I think Mina moved up to uh, Resolute uh, in my personal save. So, But I found it pretty difficult. And what I have found in this version of the game is determination dropping a lot. Um, so what you what now you have to have a look out for is your core social groups. Uh, they will come to effect. So even... Even we'll set up these mentoring groups. The the players that are in this um, in or in the secondary uh, group, they're all going to be bouncing off each other. So they they're going to be passing uh, determination and attributes, uh, not attributes, but determination, personality attributes um, uh, to each other. So you just got to watch out as an as an overall, uh, especially with selection of who's coming up from the under twenty threes and the under eighteens, and who you're actually going to buy in. Do they have the right um, attributes for your side? Have they got a Have they got a good determination? Uh, have they got the good personality attributes? So overall, at the side, I have found that uh, if you if you've got a lot of poor poor players on um, uh, low determination, that's going to rub off in a bad way to some of the other players in the squad. So the the faster you can get the attributes up for determination through mentoring and also the players that you're bringing in just make sure you're choosing the right players because it does it does make a, a pretty big difference and as i said it makes a big difference in the um when they're in the same social group as well because they will pass it on quicker so yeah you just got to be mindful of that now mentoring um it's you got to you got to still do it um but yeah you just got to keep an eye on if you are getting a hit to uh, players personalities or determination why that is and that can be some of the areas there all right, so moving over to the individual training. Uh, so what I normally do uh, for my players is, um, he's on holidays, I can't choose him. Um, but if there's, a, if there's a couple of players or uh, some center, center halves, 
if you ch- if you just leave it on player position, it it, it focuses in too broadly uh, on multiple different attributes. So there's there's two ways you can do it, uh, especially for like a center defense. You can have it. Um, for a ball playing defender, which will train a lot of different attributes. Uh, if we have a look at, you know, it's areas there that like first touch and technique, which it won't be covered on um, if you just choose a central defender on defend. So that's that's one way to look at it and try to um, try to give the development to different attributes and try to have it as a broad kind of spectrum on that player. And you know, hopefully uh, as a as a team, and he can contribute in terms of the tra- transition phase of the game um, with you know better first touch and technique. The other way to look at it, or other way to go around it, is is to having a no nonsense kind of thing. Um, so you just have set core attributes for that role. So if we choose that, as we can see, it does eliminate a couple of the attributes there. It does keep on some of the important attributes for a center half, and that'll that'll ensure that you're getting a better focus on these main uh, attributes. Um, just have a look. Obviously, later on down the track, if you if you are playing or if you, if you have got an under 18s player or under 23s, this might not be the approach that you want to set because you'll you'll leave behind a lot of those other attributes, which are not key to the role, but they are also um, good to have. And as is a, a no nonsense centre half, and what I was what I was talking about is the same rule can apply to a um, uh, a right back or a left back. Is we can choose, yeah, you can choose a com- or wing back, complete wing back, and that's going to choose a whole array of attributes there um, that they have to spend time on to increase. Um, some of these attributes, however, you might uh, not think are important for the role. So we can have a look at the fullback, or we can do a no nonsense uh, fullback, and that will increase. You know, a couple of those key attributes, spending less time once again, uh, sorry, spending more time on a couple of key attributes there. What I do recommend is you have a look, um, reevaluate every six months, every year, um, just reevaluate and see if those attributes are going up and increasing. And then maybe we we'll want to add another dimension to the player's game. So we want to then uh, have a look and then choose a wing back role for him. Uh, so then, you know, we'll be having a look at dribbling or, or crossing. The other way you can do it. Um, if you do want to have, say, the no-nonsense fullback, and just if there's areas there that are lacking, say, dribbling and um, and crossing or whatnot, is to add an indigi- uh, uh, sorry, uh, additional focus. Um, so we just have, we'll have a look at maybe attacking movements, um, not shooting, it's probably going to be passing, is it? No. Um, it's not actually there, so it was probably probably a bad example. Um, but if there's certain areas, I'll say, let's have a look, first touch, um, because it was there. No, it wasn't, yeah. So first touch and technique, and then we just add that additional focus uh, on the player. So that, that's another way around it, and it'll eliminate, as I said, some of the areas or some of the attributes that, that um, uh, say, for example, wing back would have on that maybe you don't think is as important. Maybe he's already got high acceleration, agility, pace, and uh, stamina. So that, that's just another way to look at it. Going down the roles, um, with, uh, with the last video that I did with the tactical um, tactical episode, um, I did say I, I wanted a passer. In, in the center mid, I wanted a passer, a tackler, and a guy that moves into space. Uh, I would look to actually train these guys in the position that they're going to be playing. So we're going to ha- be having, uh, what's who's that, Snylan, as a, um, a deep-lying playmaker. So that's what I would choose for that. For an attacking role, um, once again, as you can with the your wing backs and your, um, and your center halves, is you can have them on a complete forward which will train the most attributes or you can really narrow it down and just have him train as a poacher so that will narrow it down and once again choose an additional focus if you find those areas there that you need to need to increase with that individual player all right so moving over to the rest so rest you do need to have a look at it um so if you are playing a lot so especially uh, a conditioning of uh 59 percent also i would recommend having no pitch work as well for a 60 to 69 uh, and then slowly ramping uh, it up you can now uh, we'll probably have normal normal and then i would choose double so the double on conditioning on players that are not really playing regularly and uh or not playing at all and they can really afford to you know develop those attributes and try to break into the first side and that's normally your younger talent as well so you just want to make sure you can uh you're focusing you can't get if you can't give them game time you're at least giving them the most time on the training pitch um, when you come to your under 18s what i would recommend that you do is double uh, double intensity for every single player 
really go hard at your under 18s, uh, especially when they're first developing uh, in the club, you you can get the most out of them. You, you want to increase those attributes as fast as possible. So that's why I do recommend just for your under 18s, just to do double intensity for everyone. Uh, and once again, you go through the focus on uh, sorry, your position and just have a look at the player and just using the same kind of rules that you did for your um, for your main side in your under 18s and also your under 23s. However, with, um, with some of your younger players under 18s, they're pretty raw. Um, so you can have a look at the player here. He's, yeah, a lot of attributes there that really do need to move up to be of any standard. Uh, he is uh, potentially three and a half star. Uh, what, I pro- what I normally do is I'll give him the training category that hits the most... It's the most attributes or attributes that I like anyway. So normally inside forward. Um, so if you have a look at, um, you know, as we as we discuss uh, as a striker, I would, not that one, I would normally uh, put him, even though he's not really competent, I would normally put him as a, a, as a complete forward. It doesn't need to play there. This once again is just training attributes. So that will focus in on the most attributes for that player. And as I said, you know, they're really raw. Uh, you really do need to increase and just see what kind of a player he's going to be maybe when he gets a little bit older. And then you can kind of narrow down those attributes that you want to increase uh, through training and maybe take him off the uh, complete forward once he increases some of those attributes. And maybe he's going to be a good target man or, or pressing forward and you want to increase really, you know, um, go go um, go all out on those certain attributes. So that's when you can then, then change it up. Uh, but yeah, the first couple of years, uh, especially when they're in the, in the under eighteen side, um, yeah, I recommend having the most attributes hit at uh, at once, um, and then you can narrow it down when they step up to the, the to the first team or the under twenty threes. All right, guys, that's it for the video and uh, possibly the series um, for before hitting continue. If you look, if you if you want the series continue to continue on, that's funny enough. Um, and you want me to go through certain other uh, aspects of football manager. I was thinking about doing scouting, but uh, I think that's something that's I I don't normally do it the first day to be honest. Um, so that's something I'll probably leave out. Actually, scrap that. This is the last episode of Before Hitting Continue. If you enjoy the series, uh, give a like on the video, and also if you haven't already and you watched the whole series, you might as well subscribe uh, for future videos to come. All right, guys, I will uh, see you next time.